This is Filippa with Thunder Mother, and I'm blowing it up on Capital Chaos TV. This is uh, Zoran Theodorovich with Capital Chaos TV and Metal Gods Radio, and I have uh, Filippa from Thunder Mother on the line. How are you doing, Filippa? I'm great, thank you. How has the coronavirus affected the band and you personally? Well, uh, we were on tour when we got the information that we couldn't get through Denmark on our way back to Sweden. So we just had to find our way back, so cancel the whole tour. We were touring with Rose Tattoo from Australia. Uh, so that was a shame. And then all gigs got canceled for the rest of the spring and summer. So we just have uh, no shows anymore. So that feels heartbreaking. And uh, how important is coffee in the morning? And do you take it black or with cream and sugar? It's super important. <laughs> Actually, the program Survivor in Sweden, if you know that show, they might want me in it in the sw Swedish version. And I was like, how the f can I live without coffee? You know, that's that's my water. <laughs> but I drink a tiny bit of milk in it. Tiny. No sugar. But uh, I, I, w I will not survive without coffee. I drink two pots a day, I think. Two pots. So you drink it throughout the day. I drink it all day. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Good for you. <laughs> supposed to be. Supposed to be good for you. Well, yeah, I guess so for the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk a little bit about your ethnic background, uh, where you are from, uh, where you spent most of your life, and what's kept you there. Uh, I am born and raised in the south of Sweden. It's like uh, Texas of Sweden. We once belonged to Denmark, so they don't really like us down there. But uh, uh, I grew up there and I moved very young when I was 16 to Stockholm uh, to uh, study in the music conservatory over there uh, to play some electric guitar. And uh, yeah, I was the only girl of all the guitarists in school. So that was fun. But uh, yeah, I guess I'm all Swedish. And uh, have you delved much into your ancestry? Was religion a big part of your upbringing? No, like none in Sweden are religious. We're all atheists over here. But I do go to church once in a while, actually, because I like uh, to um, I like to hear the gospel music. So I'm very into that, and it's very good sense and sensation to be there. So. Um, and I'm like a little bit spiritual with these kind of crystals and stuff like that. But I don't believe in so much. I believe that you have to make your own destiny and stuff like that. So um, what was uh, was there something else about that? Was there really? No, no, no. It was just a simple question. Uh, do you sing along uh, uh, in the church when you go to the church with the uh, with the choir at uh, Mud? No, I. I mean, not in the choir, but I, uh, I'm a musical person, and we have a lot of all our like big holidays. We go to the church in Sweden, so that's basically what we do. So, uh, and I've been playing music in churches uh, as a young kid and making money out of, out of them. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> but uh, no, I, we're not super religious over here. How did you first get into music? What was your introduction to rock and roll? Uh, I saw a band in school, a cover band, when I was a kid, and uh, they played a Rage Against the Machine cover. And at that time, I was like 12, 13 years old, and I played a Swedish folk instrument called key harp. Um, you don't have it in the States, but it's a very difficult uh, instrument, and I couldn't write songs on it, and I was a bit frustrated. So when I saw them jumping around and playing Killing in the Name, I was like, wow, that's what I want to do. I want to jump around stage and be crazy and riff. And then I, I found Ozzy Osbourne. So I listened to him for like 10 years. Um, but I was also into a lot of music. Like I like reggae, Bob Marley and stuff like that. But 
it wasn't until the age of 24 I got like the salvation of ACDC, which is my all-time favorite band today. And uh, can you appreciate uh, uh, music like uh, Post Malone, uh, Lady Gaga, Justin Justin Bieber? <laughs> Lady Gaga, I, I respect and uh, I like. She's a real talented musician. I don't listen to much of the the modern music, so to speak. I listen to old style music, BB King uh, or Doyle Bramall or something like that. ACDC. Uh, 2017 was a, a big year for you and Thunder Mother, uh, a sort of a, a cleansing, possibly. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> no, but they actually quit the band. Everyone in the band left left me all alone with the. 27 festivals booked in they were just tired of the touring and fed up with being broke and uh, you know the lifestyle um, and for me it was never a question because that's the lifestyle I want so I just kept on going and I found some new members which are really hungry uh, and wants the same thing so I'm super grateful today that uh, I continued uh, three years ago when I had a lot of struggles so and now we're so happy, like, we, this is the second album we're doing with a new lineup. So we will release a new album now in, in July 31st called Heatwave. And we're super stoked and super proud. Is, uh, is there a theme that runs throughout the album or is it more of a collection of songs? Good question. Uh, like, yeah, I think it's... A good collection of songs because we wrote 45 tracks for this album and choose the absolute 10 favorites that we had we've been writing songs for one and a half year every day and uh, we just picked whatever we like and we don't care so much about what will happen because we believe in the tracks one by one and in the previous albums it's always been like it need to be acdc 100 percent you know and now we're like, we're free now. We do whatever we like. So that's a big, uh, big uh, thing to realize that, ah, oh, let's do what's fun and it will be really good. And we are so proud and it's going to be fun to play some different styles now. It's not only ACDC rock anymore. It's like Foo Fighters, Iron Maiden style, some songs. And I like to have different stuff. It's fun to keep the interest stuff for myself as a musician. Uh, and the new single is uh, Driving in Style. It appears to be very well received. Yeah. Like, we have a, like, I think tomorrow I'm checking the Spotify Artist app. We will have a half a million streams already in just uh, one month. So it's going really good with that one. People like Motorhead, <laughs> punk drums, and rock and roll. And uh, how challenging was it to allow others a hand? in the writing of the new music. I know you've written it all pretty much yourself in the past. Is that right? Yeah, I wrote everything in the past. And now we we all write together. I want to try something new. Since the, the new members, so to speak, are hungrier than I am, I would say, because I had the band for over 10 years. So, so I'm open to new things. And it was fun. And... They came with suggestions and like harmonies in riffs and stuff that I would never have thought of. So that's really interesting on the new album. And uh, what did working with uh, Soren, is it Soren Anderson? Uh, yes. What did, uh, what did he bring to, the, uh, to you and the band? What new approaches did you experience? Well, first off, Soren Anderson is uh, Glenn Hughes' guitar player. So I'm a huge fan of him. Uh, he plays amazing guitar and I was at a party and and uh, I heard a girl sing uh, and I asked what song was that this last song you you had it was amazing now that was written by Søren Andersson and she pointed at the bar and there he stood so I approached him and said hey man uh, I'm, I play in Thunder Mother would you be interested in producing us something or writing songs with us and he said I heard Thunder Mother so there was instant, instantly connection between us, and he uh, co-wrote some tracks with us. He produced it in a very fresh way and arranged uh, a lot on the album. 
like a producer should do, because we never had a real producer before. I I was producing a lot, and uh, it was nice to let someone in, in, and I don't regret it. He's also a really good friend of me now. So. Oh, what a thrill that must be! To uh, yeah. go from uh, you know somebody you admire to uh, to a friendship. That is amazing. <laughs> It's amazing. It's it's like that in this business in Europe. When we're touring, we meet big bands that I admire, and now I share stage and festivals with them. So I feel uh, really happy about that. I have my dream dream work. <laughs> and uh, you have a headlining tour coming up. It's still it's still uh, there's still hope for it to carry on. Is that correct? Well, we never know in this COVID-19 crisis, uh, so we cancel all festivals and hopefully we can start touring again in September. Uh, the, we had uh, like 105 shows this year, I think. It was supposed to be our best year. And uh, to go from that to nothing is very, you don't know what to do with yourself. So <laughs> I play a lot of guitar now, <laughs> take a lot of walks. <laughs> But uh, we don't know anything about the tour yet. Of course, we hope to start touring again in September. Uh, we hope to uh, we hope to see you in America sometime soon. That would be amazing. I hope so. We only played in Miami twice. <laughs> and uh, were there any covers recorded or bonus tracks for special releases or possibly the Japanese market? Yeah, we have a like uh, an extra song for the Japanese version. It's called Rock and Roll Heaven, and I wrote that one. And it's released on YouTube already, if you want to check it out. But on the actual album that we're releasing now in the US in uh, July, uh, we have three bonus tracks with some amazing uh, guest artists. We have uh, Jacob uh, Benzer from DAD, and we have uh, J-Bo, uh, Hammond, Hammond um, what do you call it? Hammond organ. Oh, nice, right? Uh, from uh, Glenn Hughes, of course. <laughs> and uh, I think we have one more. I'm not sure. No, but that's... Uh, and also about the bonus tracks. We had, we had um, one day left in the studio, and one of them was... We, do, was, we were just jamming around, and we uh, recorded that jam, and it became a, an, an awesome song, that is also one of our favorites now, and it's called Purple Sky. So check that out when you when you listen to the album, because that's that's a jam we came up with on the last day in the studio live. <laughs> nice, nice. Now how uh, how easy uh, was was tracking, and how challenging has it been in the past? This uh, was a completely different story because we had more time. In the, uh, in the studio, we had three weeks and I could actually finish the guitars for once. On the last album, we didn't have any time left, so there were no guitar licks on the songs. <laughs> so I was pleased to be able to go through everything and be satisfied for my own instrument, you know. And um, it was plenty of time to record and make it as perfect as we wanted to. So that was very different in the past. We had different studios. We were a broke band, upcoming band. And uh, we recorded like five different studios. I recorded in my wardrobe and we put it together. It was a mess. It was a mess. <laughs> and uh, how many cover songs are part of the Thunder Mother live arsenal if necessary? From the new album? No, I mean, do you... Uh... Uh, how many cover songs do uh, does the band have uh, that they could pull out if need be uh, to, when performing I get, live? I get it. Um, we don't play covers at all, uh, usually. Uh, but we do have some Kiss songs we do <laughs> for fun <laughs> that we might pull out once in a while. Like, uh, yeah, we do. And we might, we are even considering to record a cover with Kiss now, because we oh. have a strong bond with them. We really like them, and after playing the Kiss cruise, we uh, we just felt like we need to make a Kiss cover. <laughs> nice. We look forward to that. Uh, what other interests do you have outside of music? 
Uh, I like cooking. Um, I, my father is a chef, so I cook a lot. Uh, and then I like to uh, produce, but that's music too, right? Produce and write songs. I write. Uh, I wrote a song for opera singer in Germany recently. <laughs> um, I I also guard like gardening because it's a way to unwind after touring. But usually everything died when I come home. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's it. I think I don't have much interest except music and food and stuff. <laughs> and I I really like ghosts. Uh, how much of the uh, the new one can we expect to hear live? I also like Ghosts. Um, we will not play it live now when we start touring again because it's a bonus track. But we will definitely uh, p- uh, practice it in the rehearsal room. So in case we want to throw it in, we'll do that. But that's actually one of my favorites. Oh, so, wow. Very cool. Yeah, yeah I like and it. I'm happy you like it. Yeah, it's very, yeah. Very American Southern rock, I think. I think so. It really, it really hooked me in right away. Yeah, the, I listened to the whole, the whole album. You must be. Uh, I really like the the new album. You must be very proud of yourself. Yes, very. I can't uh, believe it's us when I listen to it. It's so well produced. <laughs> like, yeah, so I look forward to playing new stuff. I've been playing the same songs for ten years, so it's gonna be fun to play some challenging uh, songs. Very, very fun. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time, and uh, we look forward to the album releasing uh, and uh, the our resumption of our former life with the live touring and so forth. Do you have any uh, final thoughts to anybody that might be listening to this? Well, if you like rock and roll music and you like, for example, Janis Joplin, check out Thunder Mother from Sweden. And we will hit the States soon on tour. We were planning to go in November. We don't know about Corona crisis, but we might come this year. So keep an eye out.